Hello world, what is up? Welcome to Build at Home. I'm your host, Matt Forte, and I'm coming to you from my home, as is our next guest, I believe. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to him. We're going to get started in just a second. But first, before we kick it off, uh, something super important. Kids in need have missed more than 234 million meals at school due to closures from corona. Uh, with NoKidHungry.org, we're helping schools and community groups find new ways to feed these kids. But uh, we need your support. So check out NoKidHungry.org to see how you can help. If you have a little bit to spare and to give, this is a great place for you to give it to. So NoKidHungry.org. Okay. Uh, TLC's 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days Season 3 is well underway, uh, and it is exactly the kind of distraction a lot of people are looking for right now. Uh, joining me to chat about the latest season, one of the breakout stars, please welcome the man with the magnificent mayonnaise mane himself, the great Big Ed is on the show, everybody. Big Ed, how you doing? And is that, oh, no <laughs> introduction <laughs> necessary. Yeah, this is Teddy. We just Teddy. Uh, he just got out of the shower. He's feeling pretty good. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome, man. Uh, Ed, thank you so much for taking time uh, to be here, or be there, rather, and, and to have Teddy with you. Super excited to chat with you, man. How are you doing? How's quarantine life treating you guys? How are you holding up? Um, it's interesting. I'm itching to go back to work. I do. Um, I do. I'm a European kitchen designer and interior designer as well as a photographer, and um, I still have to keep my clients happy. So I'm yeah. working remotely, just trying to respect, you know, um, the the whole virus thing and just, you know, do my part, you know, to um, keep everybody safe. So for it's, sure. it's, this is a lifetime experience for all of us. That's something yeah. that we never anticipated and we're becoming part of history. This will be our biggest probably event event in, in, in our life. It's bigger than nine yeah. eleven. It's bigger than, huge. than whatever. It's huge, huge. Yeah. How are you no, doing? I'm I'm hanging in there. Thank you for asking. Uh, it, it's been a little crazy. You know, we we put this show together. We traditionally film in a studio in the middle of New York City. Uh, obviously, a terrible idea to do that right now. So we we figured yeah. out how to do things remotely, and uh, it's been really interesting and and uh, fun in a weird way, honestly, to to do the show this way. And and I get to talk to somebody like you. I have to ask Ed, uh, Ed is this the same? camera setup that you and, and rosemary first chatted through am i communicating with you through the same setup or is this new have you upgraded uh, you know what it is i believe it no it's the same camera system i believe i be, no no pardon me it's oh, not oh man All yeah right. i was using it i'm sorry so um so close. my my buddy raccoon brands teach me how to be a gamer so um they they're, they kind of help me with this really cool. Um, I have an Alienware setup with, Ooh. and I do I try to do a cooking show and and I make grilled cheese sandwiches using an iron and I vacuum sugar off of cookies with my little shop vac. But I'm having a lot of fun with that. But learning to be a gamer, so I have all this really cool equipment. And um, when they told me I was going to be on your show, I made sure that I had everything dialed up. So you it's, have it all yeah dialed well, in, man. It looks it looks amazing. You sound great and you look hey, great. Hey, but can I can I do a big shout out to? Please do. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to all of the moms, the stay at home moms that have kids that um, are probably going out of their mind. I was talking to my friend, Nancy. Um, she's up in Menifee and she was telling me that um, she had, she, she was homeschooling her kids for about three days and they both got expelled like on the third day. So no, but just a huge, <laughs> huge shout out to um, the moms out there that are homeschooling their kids and, and hopefully they're not going out of their mind. So yeah, that's been one of the interesting things to hear about from a lot of people is the the experience of having to figure out how to homeschool their kids, helping their kids learn from home. It's just it's such a crazy facet to this uh, many sided diamond of chaos that we're all yeah. trapped inside. Uh, yeah. You got to talk about mothers. How's your mom doing, man? I know you guys. Uh, I think you're separated for for her protection yeah. right now, right? Is that what's going oh, on? Man, that's so nice of you to ask. So she doesn't have the virus, but she's kind of had a cold. All so. Right. My, my mom, basically, she lost her family house after 25 years, and she was going to have to move back to Arkansas. And I'm like, um, and I've been single, like, you know, I've lived on my own in North Park for 11 years. And I finally kind of just said, okay, that's it. It's time for me to take care of my mom. So I found a big two-bedroom house. I have it all fixed up. Oh, my God. Her room, I bought her all new bedding. So the only thing she has to do is move in her clothes. I moved her furniture already. I moved my furniture. So I'm just keeping her at her place for now. And she'll probably um, migrate over here in, in the next probably two weeks. Okay. So we'll for her. But thanks for asking. She's doing great. She's That's 81 good. years old. She's a respiratory nurse. She takes care of um, this little baby on a respirator. And she's just, 
um, work and loves wanted, her. And she was still working prior. To, I'm sure now with the, with the with the chaos yeah. and everything. No, it's probably not yeah. safe for her. No, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not safe for her. So, but still working at 81. So now yeah. with our new home, she's 10 minutes from work. So she's not sitting in traffic for hours, and and I can keep an eye on her, you know, and yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Good so, for you, yeah, man. That's great. Man. Of course, man. No, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I saw because I saw an update a little while ago that you like said that you had to shut down the studio and you guys were going to get a house, and, and I didn't know how like uh, with all this going on how that impacted you guys, but I'm glad she's doing all right, man. That's good. Well, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people right now, they're taking this time. They're catching up on TV shows. There, A lot of people discovering 90 Day Fiance for the first time. Uh, you know, you're a part of a very popular show. What are you watching? If people are watching your show, what, what do you watch? I, is it on my screen behind me? I'm watching myself. Oh, I, actually, I don't know what's on your screen right now. I thought I saw you earlier when you first danced, yeah. which I thought was great. It's, it's big Ed on my Vespa. So I'm a um, huge American Idol fan. I'll be nice. totally honest. Um, I love stuff like that. And, um, and I do watch, um, you know, on TLC, I love Dr. Pimple Popper is kind of probably one of my favorites. I know it kind of grosses people out, but I'm, it's, I'm addicted to that. And then, um, and I really like watching the other people, um, on the show. I find them very interesting yeah. and, and, you know, I think we have a great, um, from what I hear from last season, I guess we're kind of knocking it out of the ballpark, but, um, so yeah, yeah just, yeah. Yeah, I'll try one, one thing I'm trying not to do. I mean, I I was watching uh, the news 24 seven, and I, I don't recommend that to anyone. So I watch about 15 to 20 minutes in the morning, and then in in the afternoon, and then I got it, and I just try to you know be safe, obviously, but just you know try to not let it impact my my yeah. brain, you know. As far That's as that a good approach, man, to, to kind of ration it out and, and pace yeah. it and not, and not just let it be on all the time. Uh, right. You know, it's true that this season's outstanding so far. So many amazing stories, so many great characters, so much fun to watch along. Uh, when you watch, do you fast forward through your segments or do you watch your bits as well? Yeah. Well, I did last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, man, last week was rough, got, dude. I'm sorry. I got, I got murdered. Oh, my yeah. God. And they were, oh, my God. They were, you know, people can be really mean and yeah. it was you know for for the, like the last four weeks i've been getting just lovey-dovey big ed i love you and you know i, I want to marry you all of this and then overnight literally overnight i wake up the next morning and i'm like um, all gone all gone it's all gone like i i had had four weeks of fame and then it just it just went what? downhill you know going into this experience you know i i don't know how what were your expectations man you know what what did you think would happen you know there's going to be fans there's going to be critics what were you thinking coming into it were you nervous yeah. about doing the show at all well i jumped into um two feet you know um forward without even you know testing the water i met rose online on a social yeah. media i fell in love and bought a ticket i'd never heard of 90 day fiance yeah. And um, of course, my daughter and my ex and and all my friends are like, "Are you nuts? They're gonna right. they're gonna they're gonna ridicule you. You're gonna put your your personal life out there. It's gonna be exposed to the entire world." And so I didn't, you know, it, it was kind of at first it was really tough when they started to do the teasers. Yeah. Um, I have a a, a syndrome called um, um, KFS, which is um, Clipple File Syndrome. So I have a a shorter than normal neck and a bigger rib cage and a, and a um, very ridiculous personality. I'm kidding. I made that part up, but so I look different, right? So in high school and all through grade school, I was teased. I was called no neck Ed and, you know, where's your neck? And, you know, um, Hey, a, a girl walks into the room and every head turns except for Ed because it doesn't have a neck. I mean, I've heard every single neck. Heard everything. Yeah. Every, and then in, in high school, I was a gymnast actually. And so I would work out in the, um, in the locker room with the big football players. And um, one day I got stuck in the neck machine. So that kind of became a joke, like Ed's the, the neck machine. So it kind of, I kind of started to make more light of it. But um, mm. so when the, when the teasers first came out, it was just nonstop. Um, they were taking my, my head and putting me on, on, on crazy, um, you know, animals. It was just ridiculous. And then, yeah. then, and that's when I started to kind of panic, go, okay, this was just not a good thing okay. to do. My daughter was right. And then all of a sudden I start getting these letters from um, all over the world, people telling me, Hey, I think I have your condition, your condition, what's it called? And they would send me a picture. And I said, well, I've been diagnosed with this. And some of the letters would just like, I mean, they would choke you up. And mm. it, it, it reminded me of a funny story when I, I used, I used to do in-home design and sales with a closet company where we would go to their home, measure their spaces and sit at their dining room table. And I designed my laptop. 
Well, one day I'm sitting there and this four or five year old girl sits next to me and goes, can I draw you? And I'm like, I'm like, absolutely. You know, I love art. So, um, so she started to draw me and then she shows me the picture and I just start freaking laughing because she basically drew a box, which was my body. And then a box right on top of that box with a smile and arms and legs. And when I saw it, I'm like going, oh my God, this is amazing. And what I realized, I think at that moment is that she wasn't trying to be mean. Right. She was just, um, she was just showing me how she saw me. And yeah. so at that point I realized, wow, it's okay to be different, but you know, I do recommend if, you know, there's a lot of bullying going on, not just with me, I can, I can take it. I probably yeah. shouldn't have said that. I can take most of it, but, <laughs> but you know, yeah. but, but some people they can, and, and this is kind of a sad story too. I, um, I had my best friend, um, Scott, uh, 27 years, and I used to call him Scoot. And, uh, and we did everything from Vegas to, to Hawaii to Cabo. We were just like inseparable. And he was about 300 pounds and, yeah. um, oh, you know, so obviously overweight and he was never, never thought he was good enough. And people would make fun of him because of his weight. And when we, we'd go to a restaurant, he, we couldn't sit in a, in a booth because of his size. So he did that gastro bypass where they remove three quarters of your stomach. And wow. so he went through that. He dropped about 140 pounds, but Damn. Um, was in an accident and um, had to take painkillers and and it wasn't a good situation and he um, he ended up taking his life um, and this was about eight years ago and that was a, a gut punch for me and and you know when when I see people getting bullied I don't like it and when right. people bully me obviously I don't like it so I just I think in this in this very sensitive time where we we do a good enough job making up enough crap about ourselves let alone having other people, you know, um, say stuff about us. So, you know, I'm hoping that, and I didn't expect this either, man. I didn't expect, yeah. you know, to be able to have a platform where I could make people feel good about themselves. And, you know, I'm just a 54 year old goof. You know, the, what you see is what you get. I mean, I, the mayonnaise and the hair, it's just, you know, when I, Love when it. I was telling the, when I was telling the producers like, well, so tell me about your routine. I'm like, well, you know, what do you do to stay young? I'm like, well, you know, I, I dye my hair once a month. My daughter tells me not to, uh, but then my my scalp gets ish, itchy. It irritates it, so then I put mayonnaise in it. They're like, "Oh, okay. Wait, wait a minute. What? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Okay, wait, you do man. what again?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And then next thing you know, you know, I'm in my bathroom in a in a in a my a rub I got from China, drinking my Malbec and rubbing yeah. mayonnaise in my hair. But listen, it works. You smell That's like weird. an egg, you smell like an egg salad sandwich, but. You know, people even mentioned to me online, they're like, dude, you know, you know, congrats on the mayonnaise. It actually, it's an old, you know, remedy that people don't really know about it. So I'm not eating a lot of BLTs or um, egg salad sandwiches anymore. I kind of lost my appetite. I was going to say, at that point, it kind of ruins uh, deli meats, I would imagine, and whatever you'd put a mayo on. You can't really have it anymore. It's a different experience now. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, yeah. so man, the best advice I can give to people is just, you know, be yourself, man. It's yeah. the best feeling. And that's what I liked. That's what I actually liked being on, you know, once I got into it, because they told me one time, you know, um, don't look at the camera. Okay. And be right. yourself. And I mean, and I, I never want to be an actor, you know, I, I have no desire to do that, but I'm just, I just like being me and, and I'm, I'm, I'm becoming more comfortable obviously in who I am where I don't, it doesn't bother me when, when you see some of the scenes coming up, like you haven't seen anything yet, by the way, you think yeah. you got, you guys think you've seen something. I'm telling you, man, it was, it was a roller coaster of emotions, of, of spats, of makeups, of breakups and makeups. It's just, it's everything in a foreign yeah. country. You know, it's going to be, you guys, that's all I can say is, you know, I'm, I'm watching in anticipation but yeah, because yeah. obviously you yeah. know what happens next. There's a there's a lot uh, in there that I that I want to unpack and get to. But one of the one of the things that you that you bring up uh, is that you're you're a goofball. You got this fun energy. Like everyone, I think a lot of the love that that has that has shown up. You look at the comments on your Instagram and all over. People love your positive energy and they love your positivity and, and your ability to stay positive. Uh, you know, when did you learn how to do that? Have you always been a positive person or was it in high school or was it after high school that you realized uh, I control this energy and I'm going to take it by the horns? Like when, when did you become that guy or have you always been that guy? No, no. Well, I, I got a lot of it from my dad who, who, who has, um, you know, passed away years ago. And, 
he was in sales and there, he gave me the best line ever. I mean, he's really what taught me how to be a successful salesperson. Although I know you've seen the two, two video, which I missed my goal this year by, <laughs> I, I did, I did 1.34 million. I missed my goal by like 150,000. So I told him I will walk down North Avenue in a two, two. And so I did it. I, I, you have to be your word anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> I've been very successful in sales. And my dad gave me this advice one time. He's like, you can, you can always attract more bees with honey, which means mm -hmm. people aren't buying your product. They're buying you. And um, I was waiting tables through my graduate degree in architecture. And um, I wanted to stand out and everybody would always, you know, people would ask for me, you know, and so I just made up one day, just came in and, and we're making name badges. And I just put big Ed on my name badge and I just became big Ed. And then all of a sudden, every Friday, there was a way to sit in big Ed section and it was touching. And I made, I made really good money. I was able to work three days a week and, and support my daughter and, and go to college. So that's where it started. And then when I graduated, I went to work for a big architecture firm in La Jolla and this guy trip, we're in a meeting one day and, and he's all nervous because this is a, another half a million dollar contract. And we're sitting down waiting for the client to come in. We're going to do our presentation. And the guy walks in and goes, you're big head. You did a tortilla toss at El Torito's and served me shots of tequila. And we ended up getting the job. And my boss on the way out said, you got to put big on in your business card. So it went on my business card immediately. And then I started yeah. to, I was, I was doing um, in-studio interviews with, with Cal with a company I work for, California Closet, and I would do all the local DJs. So they would be on the radio. Big Ed came and redid my closet. I love this guy. So people know me in not only in the design industry um, as Big Ed, but now they're learning. It it's, and it really is about um, being, it's about not creating, um, you know, this beautiful picturesque guy that somebody's going to love. It's about, making a sticker of a guy that has a, you know, big cheeks and wears glasses and, you know, and, and whatever it's about promoting who you are. And, and that's, for me, it's the easiest thing to do in my life is just to be myself. Just be like, yourself. Yeah. Is it surreal to watch the, is it surreal now watching kind of like the rest of the world catch up to, to big Ed and like discover this personality and discover you? Is, uh, it, is it weird still? Like, you're, oh, on, you're on entertainment. You're on Access Hollywood. Yeah. You're doing this show right now. It's got to be a little crazy. So, so watch this. This morning I wake up and somebody was doing a live feed. So I jump on there. Yeah. and But I shouldn't have done that because everybody's like, hey, Big Ed, what's going on, Big Ed? I, Big what? Ed. So I'm, you know, and, and my um, coworker car is like, you know, you're not going to get the Big head. We're not going to let you. And no, all my friends are like, they're not going to put up with my crap. They're not going to. They're, they're When I start acting a little, whatever, like, hey, you know, go get me that. And they're like, no, you go get it yourself. I mean, it's just, you know, they're not going to, I know they're going to keep me grounded. And that's, yeah. you know, and that's, I mean, yeah, that's what it's all about. Just be yourself and stay grounded. We touched on this a little bit, but I really wanted to ask, uh, you know, in terms of watching yourself and seeing things play yeah. back, stuff that you've lived through, th there's a, there's a hallmark of the, of the 90 day franchise. This happens to everyone every season. And it's that moment where before you get on the plane to go see the person you love, uh, they have to show you every person in your life telling you this is a bad idea and you shouldn't do this. And so you go to your mother, I don't know, I'm worried about you. And you go to your best friend, I don't know, man, I'm worried about you. When that happens to you and you experience that, those conversations are far apart. You have one here, you have one the next day. Is it is it different to see them all back to back, cut up in a montage, and see everyone say like, I'm worried about you, man. I don't know if this is the best thing or the smartest thing for you to do. You know, your best friend, your mom, everybody back to back. Is it weird watching all that playback and reliving those moments? Well, the, what I got out of that is I, um, when I told my daughter, um, she, she, you know, used a couple like, you know, words I can't say online and hung up on me. You know, that's the kind of relationship we have. And right. I didn't really realize how mad she was because um, I wasn't listening to her. I'm so excited that, I, you know, when they first told me you're going to be on the show, I'm, I'm, my mind's racing high miles an hour, so I'm not listening to her. Um, my mom um, was saying the same thing, like, don't, you know, um, don't take the ring, you know, wait, you know, don't, you know, you, you know, don't rush it or whatever. And um, but when I go back and and I see the the scenes, the the scene in the airport that was just um, what happened there was I, and this happens, I'm sure, to a lot of people. You know, I'm literally getting on a plane, and I and I never get on a plane. I've never in my life got on a plane without talking to my mom or the people in my life, my daughter. And I, I'm literally sitting there at, at getting a coffee and waiting. And, and I realized, holy crap, I'm going to get on a plane and 
I'm going to travel 7,000 miles and I'm not, you know, I know my daughter's pissed at me. I know she's mad and I'm not going to get to tell her I love her. So I tried to call her. She had to, yeah. No surprise. There's no way that she was going to answer. She didn't even know I was leaving. She didn't even know I was at the airport for that fact. So I'm like, screw it. So I just made a video and said, Hey, look, if God forbid, if something happens to me, I just want you to know, I love you. And, and she ended up, you know, calling back and that yeah. just, I carried that with me on for the 23 hours that kept, wow. me, I knew, I knew her and I would eventually be okay. I knew yeah. that, that somehow we would be able to work no matter what happened, we would somehow be able to work through that. But it's, you guys it's are great a, now, right? Like everything's great. You, you two have been, everything, awesome. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah, things are really good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um, and I gotta, I gotta let you go in just a second and let you get out of here. Uh, cause, uh, we got to wrap things up, but, um, you know, I just, I'm curious, uh, what we can expect. I know you said we haven't seen anything yet. I know you said it's a roller coaster ride. Are, you, you talked about how you had to fast forward through the last episode. Are there episodes that you feel like you may have to fast forward again, as well as we get further through this journey? I'm, a, I'm afraid so. Yeah, oh, it, no. yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some, <laughs> yeah, there the and I think here's what I, here's what I can say. Mm. I think America will fall, hopefully, fall in love with me again, and then they're gonna fall out in love with me, and then they're gonna fall in love with me. And it's like I said, what I meant is it's you know it's gonna be a roller coaster. One week, you know, it's gonna be great, and the next week it could not be great or could be good. It's just I just I want to thank all my fans. I mean, it's um, it's. I mean, I'm at a Home Depot or um, anywhere I'm at. People literally freak out. There's a nurse that lives on my block. I just moved in and and um, she's like, oh, my God, our entire nursing staff, you know, they're 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 rooting for you. We can't wait till to the next episode They They used to have watching parties, but now they can't. And, and she's like, oh, can you can you can I take a picture with you? I'm like, heck, let's do a video shout out. So nurses are like my my they're heroes to me. So I'm like I told my mom's a nurse. So, you know, um, Stuff like that, I just, I, it, it just makes it all worthwhile. As far as what's going to happen, I'm just telling you right now, there's not going to be a dull moment. And that's just, you know, not, I mean, and I'm looking at the other um, people on the show too. And I'm like, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat, just like yeah. probably they are. But, um, but yeah, just the only thing I can say is that they're, you know, we're at, we're at home and there's, it's, it doesn't, you know, unless you have, you know, as long as you have cable, it's, it's not that expensive entertainment and it's, um, but thanks for inviting us into your living room and, you know, and, and letting us be a part of your life and um, try to be nice to us if you can. And, and when, if you have to get mad at us, go for it. That's, that, you know, that's part of the whole, you know, what, what happens in reality, but, um, and just, you know, stay tuned and, and thanks for, you know, letting me have a platform and thank you, Matt, for letting me be on your, on your show too, man. This is awesome. Ed, thank I, you so much. Your wife. I get to meet your wife. That was so cute. So yeah, she, she was very well. She showed up before we started because uh, Teddy was here, and it was a big, it's a family affair. We were all having a good time. Uh, Ed, I want to thank you, man. I want to thank you for for taking time out of your schedule to hang out with us today. It's been awesome chatting with you. But also, and I, I talked to Darcy not too long ago before the premiere, and I said the same thing to her for for doing all this stuff. Because at the end of the day, it's not easy to have those cameras follow you around. It's not easy to go through the stuff that you're going through to begin with, much less to do it in front of America for our entertainment. So I appreciate you going through what you went through and, and, and doing that for us to entertain us. Uh, but also, I'm just happy at the end of the day, none of this matters. What matters is you guys are yeah. safe. Your mom's all right. Your, your daughter's yeah. all right. Teddy's all right. And I'm happy to see that and hear that. And I'm happy uh, you're here, man. Thank you. Dude, all right? I love you, bro, man. Thank you so uh, much. Man, I love you too, man. Cheers to you. Uh, cheers, cheers to you. To those, everybody out there watching, check it out. Uh, if you haven't been watching the season, get the TLC Go app and catch up. Uh, it, 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 you're not going to regret it. I'm telling you right now. It's, it's a really entertaining show. It's the only thing I can think to say about it. It's fantastic. Uh, Big Ed, everybody. Thank you so much. Big Ed. Right. To you, man. Cheers. Peace.